What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. Now, let's talk about some NBA Finals basketball, right? Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks beat the Phoenix Suns by a score of 123 to 119 at the Phoenix Suns home arena. And I promise y'all, I saw this coming, without question. Even after Milwaukee was down 2-0, I always felt like Milwaukee was the better team. And I felt, I felt like Milwaukee was the best team in the playoffs since they eliminated the Brooklyn Nets. After they got the Nets out of the way, I said, I don't think it's a team in the, uh, in the playoffs that Milwaukee couldn't beat, including the red-hot Phoenix Suns. Now, the Phoenix Suns have been playing phenomenal basketball. I mean, Chris Paul has been playing great the whole year. Devin Booker is really playing great on a national stage, had two back-to-back 40-point -back games. However, they have resulted in a loss. Why have they resulted in a loss? Because the Milwaukee Bucks' big three now are all clicking. All of them are clicking, and they're all playing together. No lie. Drew Holiday played terrible. I mean, he shot terrible the last game, but he played excellent defense. Well, last night, he played excellent defense, and he hit big-time shots and big-time buckets and baskets when Giannis was sitting on the bench, and that made all the difference. At the end of the day, if the Milwaukee Bucks win the championship, this will be known. Game 5 will be known as the Drew Holiday game. Drew Holiday was everywhere, and he couldn't be stopped. He was playing possessed like a madman. And I'm so happy that Drew Holiday overcame those Eric Bledsoe allegations, y'all, for real. Because there were some games earlier in the playoffs, in, the, in other series and stuff like that. I'm looking like, I don't know, y'all. I don't know, y'all. Hey, he's starting to look a little bit like Eric Bledsoe every, every now and then, you know what I mean? Especially after Milwaukee dropped that bag on him, which got Giannis to stay. I'm like, come on, Drew. You got to play better than that. Um, but yeah, man, the Milwaukee Bucks... One look, one hell of a performance last night. I always say this: whenever Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday come to play with Giannis, it's 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 a wrap. It's a wrap at that point. Seriously, I it, it, and it's so to me. If both of them score twenty points and Giannis get thirty something, it's done. And it's even more secure than when Devin Booker, Chris Paul, and DeAndre Ayton get off. Because even when they get off, DeAndre Ayton had twenty and ten. Chris Paul had 21 and 11. Devin Booker had 40. They still were. They still lost the game. And it's because, to me, Milwaukee, and this is how I know Milwaukee's a better team. When Giannis go to the bench, they're still, they still are able to go on huge runs and score in bunches. Prime example, right? The Bucs scored 43 points in the second quarter, and Giannis only had four of those points. He only had four, not four, four of those points in the second quarter, right? The Suns was trailing at three. They were down by three at half after being up by 16, 16 through one quarter. So that let me know all that's all I need to know. That means they have other guys on their team that are reliable to pick up the scoring load when Giannis goes to the bench. A problem that I often saw with uh, LeBron James led teams. When LeBron was on teams, when he went to the bench, a lot of times outside of Kyrie Irving and them, it would be Kyrie Irving. Outside of Kyrie Irving, for real, for real. When he went to the bench, his team would struggle to score, would struggle to initiate offense. That's not the, that's not a problem with this, with this Milwaukee Bucks team. From Chris Middleton, who I, I have earned a ton of respect for Chris Middleton during his whole playoff run. No lie. Because before this playoffs, I remember when they first gave Chris Middleton that bag, I said, what in the hell is Milwaukee doing? Why is they giving this bag to Chris Middleton? And Chris Middleton is not a guy who really is going to be, I didn't even think he was good enough to be a Robin to uh, Giannis' Batman at that point. I didn't think he was good enough, and I hate to use that phrase because I feel like the ESP, ESPN and other analysts are using that phrase to divide Giannis and Chris Middleton, who's the Batman, who's the Robin. They call him Chris Middleton, really the Batman and all of that. But it was just a play on words, basically. Any or comparison. I didn't know if he was able to be the second best player on a championship winning team. But right now, I see, I see it clear as day. Clear as day. He definitely can. Um, Chris can be Chris Middleton can be inconsistent at times, but when he's hot, he can alter games in a major way. Like when he got them heat check moments and he hitting shot after shot after shot, he can seal he, like he can really seal the deal on a game. Especially when he had he have those big third and fourth quarters. We've seen him against Milwaukee. I mean, I'm against Milwaukee. Sorry, we've seen him against Atlanta, against Brooklyn. He had 25, a 25 point quarter, 23 point quarter, something crazy. He explodes and get the job done. The game before this, he had 40, right? So um, I got to give respect to guys like Chris Middleton, to guys like Drew Holiday, who's a excellent defender, y'all. I'm telling y'all, 
that steal that Drew Holiday made and that, that steal in the alley oop is the biggest play in Bucks franchise history in the last 50 years, without question, right? Drew stole the ball from Devin Booker and then threw the oop up to Giannis. Now, credit to Giannis, because I feel like you can just throw the ball up anywhere and Giannis going to go up and snag that motherfucker and put it, like, snag it and put it in the rim without question. Dude is, a, like, Giannis is an animal, man. And um, I have critiqued Giannis in the past for areas where he's come up short. But even yet and still, with him missing free throws, the man is staying aggressive. You, yeah, he shot 4 of 11 from the free throw line. But still, keep attacking, keep attacking. Get them guys in foul trouble. You're going to miss it. Yeah, you're going to miss some. But you can very well knock down knock down some too. Gamble on yourself, young man. Keep going. Keep trying to knock, keep going to the rim. Keep attacking the paint. Keep attacking the boards. Keep crashing the boards vigorously like he's doing. And good things is going to occur for this team, man. Um, Yeah. And if I'm look, I'm looking at this team. Phoenix done lost three games in a row. Three in a row. After Devin Booker put up 40 in back-to-back -back games. And I know Monty Williams... Don't curse. But it just might be time for Money Williams to start cussing now. God damn it. Because they didn't lost three games in a row and one at home. This ain't how it's supposed to go. They like, it's not supposed to start off 2-0. And then now they down 3-2. Like, that's ugly for that squad. And I saw as certain plays was happening, Giannis then was taking the life out of that arena. Without question. But, I mean, they made a, the Phoenix made a run at the end and tried to come back into the game. But just hella, hella fine defensive plays by the Milwaukee Bucks team in back-to-back -back games. Giannis blocking DeAndre Ayton in game four. Um, uh, Drew Holiday getting a steal from Devin Booker and throwing a oop up to Giannis at the end of the game. And I'm telling y'all, when I saw Giannis dunk and stay on the camera like this and step like that, I said, oh, shit, hold on now. This might be over in six. Now, I called it Milwaukee in seven when the series started. I said Milwaukee in seven. But I said, well, damn, the one Giannis looking like that, Flexing on him like that. I said, this might be over with. Stand in the camera. I said, it's, it's a, it might be a done deal, y'all. And I know everybody is um, up in arms and everybody wants Chris Paul to finally get him a championship. 16 years in the league. He's never even been to the, he hadn't been to the conference. Wait, did he go to the conference finals? Before this, 16 years in the league and he hadn't been to the NBA finals or nothing like that. People are rooting for him. They say, look, Chris is one of the best point guards to ever play in his game. And he absolutely is without question. Growing up, Chris was my favorite point guard, even during them years where it was head-to-head, -head, head, him or Darren Williams. And I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Darren played at the University of Illinois or Brandon Champaign, you know what I'm saying, in Champaign, about an hour and 30 minutes away from Chicago. And I loved that team with him, D. Brown, and Luther Head, right? However, I felt like Chris Paul was a better point guard, and I loved watching Chris. I'm going to say this, though. In recent years, I've seen Chris Paul and who he is and how stuff he do. You know what I'm saying? He's a great player. But Chris talk a lot of shit. Too much shit for me. He talk crazy, reckless. He say some stuff like it make you want to whoop his ass. Like you got to choke him. You got to whoop Chris' ass because Chris talk too crazy for me. And I know it's not politi politically correct to say this or whatever. But I'm, a, I'm telling y'all right now. After I didn't see that Chris be talking, even how he talked to referees and officials. And I know the players feel like all oh, these officials ruin the game. They make bad calls, so on and so forth. Chris be out here taunting the refs. Talking shit to him, talking crazy to him, all type of crazy and all of that. If I was a ref, I have to fight Chris ass, cause Chris antagonized folks to a whole nother level. He an asshole for real. So when I, so forgive me when I say this, I don't care if y'all Chris Paul fans. I was a Chris Paul fan growing up. I don't give a damn about Chris winning the championship. I really don't. I don't. Chris is a great player. If he wins, he wins. If he not, if he doesn't, so be it. It is what it is. I don't give a damn about Chris winning no championship. I'm not boo hooing if he don't win. I don't, you know, LeBron, my dog, y'all see the LeBron picture, and LeBron is Chris, and Chris is LeBron's boy. I don't give a damn if Chris win. I really don't. I want to know, I want to, I just want to see the best team win this game. And I really, I want Milwaukee to win because I called Milwaukee winning after they beat Brooklyn. I want my prediction to be true. So I want Milwaukee to win. So shout out to my fellow Midwest team, man. And um, I'm rooting, I'm happy for Milwaukee and I'm rooting for them too. Because I remember when the, the finals first started and reporters like Stephen A. Smith was acting like they didn't want to be in Milwaukee. They don't want to have to go to Milwaukee and watch them play. They don't want to have to be there. Like, like, you know, Stephen A. Smith would rather be in Miami on South Beach. He'd rather be in L.A., possibly New York or something like that. He acting like uh, Milwaukee wasn't interesting enough for him to be there so on and so forth because it's not the city of glitz and glamour like a, 
uh, L.A. or uh, Miami or, you know what I'm saying, something like that. Or South, they don't have a South Beach or whatever. So what? I don't give a damn. Milwaukee's playing great basketball, damn good basketball, and these guys, like, for me, this is a real definition of a team. Like I said, when Giannis go to the bench, them boys still find a way to score. Shout out to Big Bobby Portis from uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. Shout out to Arkansas, man. Y'all know I went to grad school in Arkansas State, right? So, um... Uh, shout out to Lil Rock, man, because Bobby, I remember Bobby playing for my Chicago Bulls. And I always liked Bobby when he played for the Bulls. I liked Bobby in college at Arkansas. Bobby is proving to be a valuable piece of that team. Being able to knock down open threes, because he's always open, you know what I'm saying, for that corner three. And he's able to knock him down as a big man. And he's getting rebounds, getting and one plays, getting hustle baskets, all of that. Hustle rebounds. Also, shout out to Pat Connaughton. He's an X Factor on his team, too. Do hit four of six from four of six from three-point range and also was secure. He he jumping, he be flying through the air to secure defensive rebounds and play some very, very solid defense, man. But um, yeah, man, Chris Middleton deserved every damn penny that Milwaukee gave him. He a much better co-star than I ever imagined him being, for real. And again, at times, yes, he can be inconsistent, but it's it's undeniable that he got a lot of moments when he get hot. Where he changed the game all the way around for Milwaukee, man. Um, yeah, man. And, and Giannis has all of my respect after this after this run too. The man is averaging 32, 14, and six on 62 percent shooting. Like, and I'm like, man, this dude. Y'all hear my son in the background because he don't want to sit in the walker right now. But anyway, he he's averaging 32, 14, and six on 62 percent shooting. And it, and last night it even it didn't even feel like Giannis got all the way off like that. But the man still finished with 32, six, and nine. You know what I mean? Uh, Drew Holiday had 27 points, 13 assists. He getting dimes. He's scoring. He knocking down threes. Drew was like, man, in that second quarter, Drew was phenomenal. And then he locking up Chris. He d d up Chris Paul, d up Devin Booker, all of them. Like, all right, Drew, like, show you show you not Eric Bledsoe. You way better than Eric Bledsoe could ever imagine, man. Pat Connison had 14. Bobby Portis had nine. Um... Yeah, man, I, I really, really, I feel this Milwaukee team, man. This is a true grinded out great team. No glamour, no all is no um, fancy, uh, flashy type basketball. They not the 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 America's darling, America's favorite, or nothing like that. But they going out there and playing basketball and hooping them boys. And I'm telling y'all, Milwaukee ain't scared of Phoenix at all, man. Like Devin Booker's phenomenal. Chris Paul is a great, uh, amazing, all time historic point guard, right? Um, DeAndre Aiden is an exceptional talent. Going to be a great big man for years to come in this NBA. But this team, Milwaukee, is not afraid of them, man. And when them boys come to hoop, when Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday come hoop with Giannis, it's, it's, and I'm telling you, it's curtains. It's curtains at that point when they come to play with them, man. They, when they come to play with Giannis, it's curtains on these boys, man. So, yeah, Chris Paul is a great point guard, but he talked too much shit for me. And that's why I wasn't even mad. Like, people was mad. I understand it was broke. It was dirty. It was bogus. But when Pat Bell pushed Chris Paul, I understood why he did it. Even though Pat talked a whole lot of shit himself. Shout out to the West Side of Chicago. But I know Pat talked crazy himself. But Chris be talking crazy. I, I've seen him do it on several occasions. Like, you got to whoop his ass. Like, I, if I was a player, like, I had to fight Chris. Let him know what time it is. Because he do way, way too much. And then try to fall back and play like he the good guy every single time. I'm just the NBA ambassador. I'm just a good guy. I'm just I'm an ambassador. And all that. Boy, Chris, I'll tell Chris, I'll smack you, bro. I'll smack dude. Because he talk too, way too damn crazy. He say some stuff like, all right, who, who you talking to, fam? Like, it be too wild. And then when he then when he get pushed or something happened to him, he act like he don't know what happened. And then... Chris be doing a lot of flopping, too. You know what I'm saying? And y'all know, Bron Bro be doing flopping, too. Y'all get on Bron for flopping. Chris need to be getting on. He need to, They need to get on him for flopping, too. And let me just say this, too. I, and I'm a, like, I really respect Monty Williams, especially after, you know, the tragic incident that happened with his, uh, his wife, I believe, and all of that. And, and I think it was his wife. Yeah. Um, lost his wife tragically and everything like that. And he's great. He's coached these guys to the championship. He's done a great job coaching his team. Devin Booker is an exceptional talent. Chris Paul is an all-time great guard. They do a lot of damn complaining about officiating. Way too much for me. As much as, especially with Devin Booker. Devin Booker be hacking, like last game when he had them five fouls, Devin Booker was hacking his ass off. If there was a way he could end with eight or nine fouls, he would have ended with eight or nine fouls in that game without question because Devin was out there hacking. 
he was not playing careful at all with them five fouls, like at all. So when he got the uh, foul out of the game, I'm like, well, damn, finally. Because Devin was out here doing way too much, man, Without way too much. But, man, I'm so, like, for real, for real, I'm starting to see Giannis's confidence even rise even more. And this team believes in each other. Milwaukee believes in one another. Ain't no jealousy. Even though people trying to divide, divide the team with him and Chris Middleton, they all support each other. They got a lot of love for each other. They really want, they rooting for each other. And I'm seeing how Giannis is doing like this one. Bobby Porter is doing like, yeah, man, let's get these dudes up out of here, man. And I'm sorry, I know everybody root for Phoenix because Chris Paul, I don't give a damn. I want Milwaukee to go pop them boys. I said in seven, but if they get it done in six, so damn be it. Machiavelli Mills TV, I'm out. Peace.